Hey everyone, Melissa here with The Creative Season and we are continuing to paint from our garden series. We're painting eggplant blooms today and these blooms are just a little bit lighter in color. So the palette's changing just a bit. We're using the same colors but not quite as, in as intense. And I end up doing some splattering, which is really a lot of fun. But in this garden, the eggplant is not quite growing as fast as some of the other um, vegetables like the tomatoes and the squash which are just exploding. But it's been fun to watch these beautiful blooms unfold fold gently no eggplants yet but I'm hoping in the next few weeks I'm gonna see some baby eggplants so grab um, some of our purple our green our yellow and let's start painting good morning everyone or hello I should say hello wherever you are um, I am a bit behind in my recordings um, this week so I am recording a little bit earlier in the morning it's an overcast day which is great it's gonna the lights pretty good here and um, we are gonna do eggplant blooms today and I'm gonna bring you in really close to the sketch that we're going to do I have gone over it with micron pen I started with pencil then went over it with micron pen just so you can see it a little bit better I was in my mom's garden this weekend looking at those beautiful eggplant blooms i'm going to bring this up a little bit closer as you can see we've got some purple going on a lot of green um, and just a sweet little blue so no eggplant coming up yet so we are just going to create those blooms if you are painting from a live eggplant you'll notice that the it's a pretty proliferous plant i did kind of rearrange some of the leaves so we could show off a couple blooms. I've got three blooms that we're going to sketch and paint. I also wanted to note on the colors, so we're still sticking with our palette, but I wanted to point out once again that dioxazine purple. That's not in our palette, but um, I know that I'm going to probably want some more of a purplish. This purple that we've been using, we've been making from the cadmium red, which is the light hue plus thalo blue, and it's a nice purple, but I wanted a little bit more brightness, so I did up adding some dioxazine into that mixture, and that's what this color is right here. So I just encourage you to play with your palette a bit. We're just gonna add a touch of purple. I'm mostly gonna stick with the ones that we're creating. I might add just a touch of the warmer purple as well. It can be really hard to get the exact blends that we want. So I am just playing and enjoying a little bit of that freedom this morning. And when we paint the actual eggplant, we'll be probably pulling in that dioxazine purple because it gives that warmth that I think we're gonna want. Okay. I'm gonna set everything up. I'm gonna get my paint brushes and everything wet and we're gonna start painting. So if you need to take a few minutes, sketch this now. I'll bring it up closer so you can pause the video if you wanted. And then I'll see you back here in just a second. Okay, okay, so we're ready to go here. I'm gonna come back up. I just was rearranging things a little bit. And so I'm gonna be looking at the painting, where we wanna start. I do think that I am gonna start a bit with the green leaves because I want those to dry, then we'll go to the blooms. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do a little bit of a background. And I'm thinking maybe we'll even do a bit of a purple background. We've been doing a red and brown, which has been great. Um, kind of imitating that fence, but I thought we might do something new today. So again, I'm getting everything nice and wet. I have noticed with the eggplant blooms that the leaves were lovely. They were quite light as far as the green goes. I was also noticing that you may have noticed this too, the, the stems and the leaves, they almost look like lily pads. And you notice too that they are seeming to cover a lot of the area, um, at, at, like a large surface area, like almost as if they're going to catch the blooms when the blooms fall off the eggplant, which I thought was really, really just an interesting um, feature of these leaves. So again, I'm coming through. I'm going to take maybe even some yellow because I get I notice a lot of yellow in these leaves, and I am mixing a little bit right here on the paper. Sometimes that is not advised, but you know, we are just having fun creating these really fun watercolor sketches. I'm gonna actually leave this guy. I'm adding just a little bit of color, but notice some of the leaves near the blooms almost take on the purplish color that the blooms do. So I am gonna change that up a bit too and add a little bit more purple in there. And again, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna get some more green and just letting that move around. I noticed that there's really nice, um, lovely curves in the leaves. There, last week with the marigolds, they were a little chaotic, right? There was just all those stems were coming out everywhere, every which way, just like the petals 
on the on the marigold flower, there was so much action in those leaves. And so I noticed that we have got a little bit more of uniformity in our eggplants. I'm actually going to grab a smaller brush so I can go a little bit more narrow on my stems. So coming through here, and this is going to end up being going off into another stem, but I'm just going to pull some of that color down. I will tell you, I will be adding a little bit of purple as well, so we can add that de depth of color and shadowing in. So coming back over here, just looking at to where the light might be hitting. Now I planted the eggplant behind the tomatoes and in between the fence. And I think those tomatoes, they are just hogging all the sunlight. The tomato plant, specifically one of them, just burst up and I realized it is crowding out some of the other plants' ability to re receive sun. So that's kind of been a bummer. The eggplant doesn't seem too disappointed. It's still flourishing, but I'm wondering if it's maybe not as prolific, if it was getting more sun like some of the other tomato plants are. So much to learn with planting a garden. I didn't even think about the fact that some plants are just going to pop up and take up some of that sun sunlight. Okay, so again, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow back in here and this, being careful not to go into the bloom, and I'm going to let that dry a little bit more before I come back and add in the purple for the plant. So I'm going to come back in right over here. If you're working with me, I'm going to have to clean my palette. I've kind of got my greens and my yellows mixed up, which is not a big deal when we're painting stems and leaves. However, if I want pure yellow, we don't want green in it, right? All right, I'm going to pick up some more green, and with the smaller brush, it takes a little bit longer to move things around, and that's okay. We're just moving things again, Let moving this around. All right, okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to go back to my larger brush, making sure you can see that too. And I am going to add a little bit of purple in. I think that it's going to be really nice. I want to add it into when everything is fairly wet, right? Because that way um, it's going to blend instead of it's going to blend really nicely. So again, I know these plants below, they're definitely going to be more in shadow. So again, just moving that wet paint around. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to get the brush really wet. I'm going to pick up some of my paint right here. And I am just going to move a little bit of that purple right down here, right in the stems, moving it right here, letting that paint just do its thing as well and just dance a bit. There's not tons that I was seeing when I was really examining those leaves, but again, just to create that sense of shadowing. And I did notice on my stem, I'm going to end up coming back and make some of those edges, add a little bit of purple there. So letting it merge together, and you can see where it just starts to create its own its own lines. I'm going to pull it down here, add a little bit right in here, not a lot, just a little, and over on this guy too. Not tons. And you can see the purple really starting to fade out, which I kind of want, especially as I move up. I'm going to pick up some more green and add that right up here. Right in here as well. I'm just enjoying all the different greens that we're creating, right? There's a lot of green in this collection in the garden series, which has been a lot of fun. I'm going to pick up some more yellow, mix it more with some of that hooker's green, and then come back again. And really adding the different shades of green adds a lot of depth to the painting. Moving that around here where I want to create shadows. We don't have to do long lines. It's not like we're coloring in the page, but just adding the darker colors is going to help things pop and moving that right along in here. Now I'm going to add in some yellow right on that top leaf there, that yellow, light yellow green. I'm going to come back and I'm going to just kind of let things merge together and that looks really pretty. Again, almost being a little bit impressed and influenced by that water lily look that I think these leaves have. Okay. So now that we've gotten those leaves, you kind of take one more look, see if we forgot any leaves here. 
It's very nice, very loose. We've got lots of different colors going on, which is lovely. Let's grab a smaller brush now. We are going to pull in some green, but I want to pull in that purple first. And the blooms were kind of a whitish, just so we're going to actually let a lot of white from the paper come through. And I'm actually just going to do with this very watered down purple, almost outlining the petals. And I know it is so tempting, especially with the blooms. We want to just go all in with the color. And I'm going to go a little bit all in with the inside one right here, where we're seeing kind of that inside, but not totally and completely. I'm going to come back over here. Don't let it touch the green. If your green is still wet, you could even let it dry. Now the stem, this part is still, there's. it's pretty green, but I, I wanted to pull in a little bit of that color. So I've got that there. I'm going to have to create some more. And this one too, I'm actually going to add in some of that purple in this leaf because I noticed the leaves are right next to the blooms. Had some more purple. And then this one, it's really... I've got the stalks. I don't have as much of the bloom though, like right in here. We're gonna, same with this one. We only have the beginning of the bloom. I'm going to add a bit of the purplish white because I could certainly see it on the flowers, but they are getting really ready to explode. And I kind of like that on our painting where we have one, two, three flowers, and we have one that's just beginning to open. The second one is starting to open, and this one. It, the tendrils have kind of curled back and this bloom is fully open. Okay, if you want to grab some green, I'm gonna add some green, yellow, and oh, we're getting some more sun, I can tell, on our on our, our, our board here, which is good. Okay, I wanna just make sure there's no glares or shadowing. I'm gonna go ahead over here and taking that green carefully where those tendrils are, that we're curving back as that flower unfolds, the stalk kind of makes way for the bloom. It's so interesting. I think uh, with plants and flowers and nature, you see that everyone knows their place in that season that they have of growth and then prolific growth and exuberance and then the death, right? It dies and the bloom falls to the ground and it just, no one is, well, some do, I have to agree. I think like some of the flowers, they really fight <laughs> to last as long as they can. But there's definitely a rhythm to the seasons and to all the plants. Okay, I think that looks really lovely. You can see too, I haven't overdone, we're not overdoing this painting. Um, I do wanna do just a little bit of purple. If you wanted to grab a little bit of your dioxazine, I'm going to mix up. I realized I need to create some more purple. Oh, that was too much blue. And you can see I'm pretty, pretty casual about this. So that's that depth of purple. What I'm going to do now is take your small brush and then I'm going to add just just a little bit. I just want to create a little bit more intensity because it's such a fair flower, but it's going to have such a beautiful eggplant, right? So we just want to give a little bit, a little bit of a, a peek here. And I'm actually going to do a little bit of splattering. I'm re-releasing um, my paint exuberant flowers, which is all the splatter art. We basically do splattering and create all sorts of flowers added some new content to it, but just been playing with splattering. I think it's really a lot of fun. And I'm just even right here, I'm going to add in some more splatters. This is not splatter art per se, because I'm not using the splatters to create more to just add some depth. Instead of doing, we could do the whole thing, the background, but I'm thinking I'm just going to leave this one white and I'm going to do some splattering. And um, we're going to have a little bit of, it's be a little bit cleaner, right? A little bit more stark. I'm just going to get some splattering down here. And the only thing I might do is I might take a little bit of that brown that we've been playing with. And down here, just a little bit of brown. Real light, real watery. I will say, if you want to splatter, make sure the paint is fairly dry, because if not, the splatters will merge. And that's really not so much fun. So I'm just going to do a little bit of brown. 
and we're going to keep it really light. These, remember, these are all sketches. We're not trying to do really detailed paintings, and I'll bring that back. And even now, we're not even to 15 minutes. So just let me straighten this out just a bit, too, so that you can see that. And if you want to do a little bit of brown as well in different areas, just to bring in that sense of the ground and the dirt, I might even just, I had noticed a few little knobs on the actual plant. We could mix red and green and that would certainly do it, but I'm since I'm playing with the brown, I'm just gonna bring that in. I'm even gonna bring a tab of brown right around here. Just bringing in that color. And then I'm gonna, going to take my paintbrush with the green on it and we'll just pull it down. So anywhere where you think that's too much brown, you can always pull it down and that'll create again some nice shadowing as well. I noticed on the eggplant, kind of like on the pepper plant, there was just some nodules coming out, which I believe it's for new, new growth, I'm not sure. Take one more look around your painting. Where else might need another, a little bit more color? For example, this guy needs to be maybe a little bit darker. Adding in some shadowing right down here on this leaf. If it feels like a line, you can always just come back in, add in a little bit of water. But creating that sense of shadow, if you want to add some purple, you know, add in some purple to some of your leaves down here, that's going to create, again, that sense of shadowing. I'm going to add a little bit more green down here, as well as creating my line. And then I am going to add some splatters up here with the green. And this is a size 2 brush, so the splatters are nice and light. Which, and they're small, which I, put, I want for this guy. So I'm just gonna do some splattering right over here, right over even in the brown, and then I'm gonna come back to with the purple, and I'm gonna grab some splatters as well. And just again, right over here. And that just creates a little bit of a fun, different look. Okay, I think this is really cute. It's not as intense as some of our other paintings, but it looks great. And um, this is gonna go along really, really nicely with, again, as I'm showing you, we've got the marigolds here. That's gonna be really pretty together. We've got the tomatoes. Um, it looks great, it really looks fun. Now, if you wanted to, if maybe you thought to yourself, I actually would want to create that sense of that fence behind, once this completely dries, you can sketch in a fence in behind and just do some of that red and brown background. I will let this dry. I'll probably come back in and just do a little bit more cleanup with some Micron Pen, but it's lovely. It's a wonderful way to get a little cre creating time in this week and to enjoy the goodness of the garden. I will have a link to the Paint Exuberant Flowers course if you want to know more about that splattering, which is a lot of fun. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your week and I'll see you next week. We are gonna be painting pumpkin blooms, and I'm so excited to tell you about the kind of a mess that the pumpkins have created in the yard. All right, you guys, see you next week.